Is that better? Okay, thank you. The, the basic path integral over the over the Young Mills field. So we have if the action S of A is as usual one over G squared integral over the four manifold uh, sigma, which I take to be uh, an algebraic surface, compact algebraic surface, F which star f plus a topological term i theta over 8 pi squared trace um, f, f Okay, and I should say this, and this uh, tau on the, the left hand side is the complexified coupling constant g squared uh, where we, the, um, where it includes the, the theta. So tau is theta divided by 2 pi plus 4 pi i over uh, g squared. Okay, so you see this is always lying in the upper half plane just because g is, is always, g squared is always uh, positive. Now written this way, this partition, uh, and this n indicates the uh, gauge group uh, un. Now written this way, this partition function is very hard to uh, evaluate, this has no uh, supersymmetry, but we include the supersymmetry in order that the, basically that the partition function then just localizes on classical solutions or the instanton solutions. I will say a little bit more uh, later. So sch schematically then the path integral becomes something like um, this we add fermions and, uh, and scalars. I won't go into the details of writing out the action completely for this, uh, this period. Okay. And one of the, the motivations you may have to, to study this, uh, to evaluate this, uh, this path integral, are physical uh, dualities. And the famous one is the electric magnetic duality. Magnetic uh, duality, which goes back to Montonen and, uh, and Olive from 1977. And then Waffa Witte made the connections in the, the 90s that basically this uh, Zn of, of tau should transform as a modular form under SL2 to, uh, to Z. Um, with A, B, C, and D in, uh, in SL2 Z. Um, Okay, so uh, I won't go into the, the details of the of the weight. There's a, there are weights multiplying this uh, this function, but I mean for the purpose of this talk, uh, I will um, I will skip that. Okay. Was there a question? It was about the weight. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can look them up in the papers, but uh, <laughs> to get everything right. Um, okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, so one, f um, yeah, this is, a f to answer this question, what we will do is to if attempt to evaluate this partition function explicitly and see to what extent um, the, this, uh, this is a modular, modular form. Okay. Um, and so one important result of the, other result of the paper of Waffa and Witten in uh, 96, Is that this this path integral localizes on the um, on the uh, Hermitian Young Young Mills equations? So the set and tau localizes Hermitian Young Mills equations. 
which is basically a state that if we integrate the covariant derivative of, of A wedge J over the, the surface, this should be proportional to the identity matrix of the, of the adjoint representation of, uh, of F. And um, that the 0, 2 and 2, 0 components of the, of the field strength are equal to, uh, to 0. Um, if you take, if you take the, your connection to be an SUN connection, then since this is traceless, this is, uh, this is equal to, to 0. And this statement uh, just says that the star of, of F is equal to minus um, F on the complex algebraic surface. Yeah. This is assuming some vanishing theorems. Or the there, yeah, there were some vanishing theorems, yeah. Which I are also kind of skipping over for, <laughs> since it's a one hour talk. But indeed, there were some, some vanishing theorems to get to this, uh, this statement. Thank you. What is J? Um, oh, yeah, I should say that J is the, the Kähler form of, the, of your algebraic surface. Okay, so this is more uh, a physical uh, language. Now we, um, uh, maybe before, okay, maybe before uh, explaining the, the, the first geometric correspondence, then I'll also say that this, uh, this path integral um, was also argued by, by Waffa and Witten that this uh, path integral should make it also a function of, of J, since you see that the uh, hermitian young mills equations depend on this, uh, this scalar form J, is roughly something as the sum over uh, instanton numbers times the, the Euler number of uh, instanton moduli spaces, uh, and then weighted by the, the classical action evaluated, <coughs> sorry, evaluated at the instanton uh, solution. So these are the number. Uh, this is the Euler number of the Sorry, is there a question? No, no, uh, the, so, the surface the has to be the pencil and you assume anything about the signal. Um, not at the moment, I'm just assuming it's a, a complex algebraic surface, such that it is in particular Kähler and it has a, has a Kähler form. I'm not uh, assuming at the moment anything that, that it's so tilted. So. Sorry, but the vanishing theorems holds for all complex algebraic surfaces, or uh, for um, Yeah, I thought there were some, some issues with B2 plus equal okay. to 1. Right. So what I, I will do, actually, I will kind of redefine this partition. I will kind of uh, redefine the right-hand side in a more mathematical, precise fashion by uh, introducing some mathematical invariance here, and, uh, and then just working with that partition function. So this is, it's a bit more motivation. You might want to, to argue more vigorously that this, this part, uh, path integral really localizes to, to this, and you have to analyze these, uh, these um, uh, these vanishing conditions, um, but I will I will basically take it from here that I need to I want to determine the generating function of these uh, these Euler numbers of uh, of instanton moduli spaces. And, uh, and the, on the right hand side, there's your, there's just a special connection that shows up. Okay? I mean, yeah, yeah. This is uh, evaluated at the. Um, at the yeah, I will explain this in detail. If you evaluate this. Um, uh, the, for a given instanton number or a given churn class, you will get a specific exponent. It will be the, the next part of the, of the discussion.
Okay. So the, the, the donaldson ullenberg yau theorem connects these Hermitian young mills connections to, uh, to geometry, and in particular the, uh, to, uh, to, to holomorphic vector bundles. These holomorphic vector bundles are classified by their churn classes, and let me just uh, recall the, the formulas of the churn classes in terms of these uh, field strengths F. Um, I guess the most basic one would be is the, the rank of the vector bundle corresponds to the n of the, the gauge group. The first churn class is uh, up to some constant equal to the trace of, of the field strength. And then the, this combination of first and second churn classes, which is the, essentially the second churn character or instanton number, is the, essentially the, the second term in the action, trace of um, FHF. So this is yeah, basically the, the dictionary of your, between your solution, uh, instanton solution, and the, the churn classes of the, of the corresponding vector bundle. And the vector bundle determine is the uh, same Yeah, indeed. That's uh, the first, the other, the other thing. So often I will abbreviate these numbers by, uh, uh, just by gamma. Then, the, indeed, the, the donaldson ullenberg yau theorem uh, says that these vector bundles are, are semi-stable. So I mentioned in those equations. Vector bundles. So, what does this uh, this semi semi stable uh, mean? It uh, to this end we de define a so-called slope phi of uh, j of gamma equal to the, the first term class dot the the Kähler form divided by the rank. Um, I view this now as a as a number, uh, leaving out the integration, but. Uh, Kind of implicitly assuming the integration over the over the forms. And then um, a factor from bundle G is uh, semi stable. Um, if and only if for each uh, sub bundle G prime in G, uh, that combination phi J uh, gamma prime, where gamma prime is the churn character of, of G prime, is smaller or equal than phi J of, uh, of gamma. So this is, this is how the dependence on this scalar form appears in the in the context of the of the vector bundles first we saw it in the in appearing in the differential equations for the uh, for the for the insubton or for the hermitian young mills equations and here it comes as a stability condition on the, on the vector bundles Uh, the moduli spaces of such semi-stable vector bundles are quite well, well studied in the, the literature. And one of the, I guess, already quite old results is that, so this is the, we let this be the, the moduli space of the semi-stable vector bundles with churn character gamma and with respect to the scalar form uh, J. Um, then this space is, uh, is smooth and uh, compact. Um, if two conditions are, are satisfied, at least if the rank and C1 um, are primitive, no, this is a, a primitive primitive vector. Vector. 
um, and then we get a condition on the on the surfaces that j dot the canonical class of the surfaces is uh, is negative. So this is so with a formal requirement that says that the the second extension group is uh, is equal to to zero and therefore it's uh, it's smooth. Okay, but then if this is a smooth and compact space, we can define a topological uh, invariance of this uh, of this space. And in particular, I will consider these um, omega, gamma, w's, uh, uh, j's, where the uh, on the right hand side I make a generating function of the of the Betty numbers or the dimensions of the of the cohomology groups of the of the modelized space. And W is the, the generating variable. So this is I zero to two times M C M B N M J comma W I minus the combination C. So here on the, the right hand side I have W to the power I minus the complex dimension of M, so that if if there is Poincaré duality and there is Poincaré duality for these these modelized spaces, and this is a palindromic polynomial which is symmetric under exchanging W and uh, and W inverse. about this relatively basic invariant. So we would like to be a bit more general. We would like to relax this, this condition of that R and C1 are, are relatively prime, where that's a primitive factor. Um, however, on the, yeah, and then on the mathematical side, we need to get uh, things become a lot more complicated because you have these strictly semi-stable uh, objects. And I will just say in, basically in words what we, what we are looking at, but um, uh, yeah, in the, for the purpose of this talk, I cannot really go in, in too much uh, detail. So what we are going to look at is a so-called virtual Poincaré function, R C1, not relatively prime. Um, We consider uh, an invariant denoted by this uh, curly curly i gamma w j, which goes on the name virtual Poincaré function. Um, to get back to to this story, if um, if R C one. So in in this this case where R and C one are relatively prime, this polynomial would be related to to this object uh, simply by multiplying a factor W minus W inverse comma W J. So the the moral of the story is this object exists for any any gamma, um, and if if um, if R and C1 are, are relatively prime, you get a, a Laurent polynomial just by multiplying W, by multiplying with W minus W inverse. Um, you can also get polynomial invariants from these guys using a, a map called the Batistic uh, logarithm, mapping it to uh, Donaldson Thomas uh, invariants. But in that case, there is a less clear link to precisely what. Yeah, then these numbers are conjecturally so-called uh, the, the dimensions of the intersection cohomology. So everything becomes a bit more, more abstract and difficult, and I, uh, I would like to, to not go into to that direction. So it's not uh, a virtual function, it's virtual in virtual It's a virtual well, function. It's a virtual function. I didn't call it a polynomial because it has these rational terms in the denominator and if you 
if you have a larger increasing rank, you get uh, increasing uh, it's a it's stacky invariant. Yeah. Well, it's it's not really a, it's it's a, it's a function. It's a rational function, so there, okay. yeah, therefore it's not. A, Um, okay, so this is all basically to say that we, we can uh, feed into a, a more precise mathematical definition of these um, of these uh, of these generating functions with um, are somehow related to this topological twisted and equals for supersymmetric uh, young male speed. Okay, so these. This is all related to the, the coefficients of this um, uh, exponent of the of the e to the power of the e to the to the action. Um, let me say now a few words of the, how this uh, this action. Um, if we uh, how, how we can evaluate this uh, this exponential. So one can can show that this exponential evaluated on the Hermitian Young Mills. Um, equations um, takes the following form. It is q to the power 1 divided by 2r c1 plus squared times the complex conjugate of q times r delta minus 1 divided by 2r c1 minus squared with a q as usual e to the uh, 2 pi i tau um, and then c1 um, plus squared is equal to c1 dot j uh, squared and we divide and we normalize it so we divide by, by j squared and this is equal to uh, then c1 squared minus c1 minus or squared minus so the I should say this the, um, this lattice of h2 sigma um, sigma z for the uh, I'm considering these uh, uh, surfaces sigma which have b2 plus equal to uh, to one, so we have an indefinite, in general, an indefinite lattice with one positive direction and the rest negative uh, directions. And this, the scalar form is is, uh, is uh, by definition essentially positive, and we can use it to project a general vector, um, and in particular the first term class of the bundle, in order to uh, to a, the positive definite subspace, and uh, and then to the negative definite uh, subspace. And that this is precisely what we see appearing here in the in the exponent. Delta. And delta, that was the, uh, the other unknown. It's, uh, it's a, uh, simply a combination of the, of the churn classes. It's uh, C2 minus R minus 1 divided by 2R uh, C1 squared. So then a more mathematical, precise definition of what we started with um, from the supersymmetric gates theory uh, point of view is uh, this uh, is a generating function where we sum over all first and second term classes and we keep the rank of the, the bundles fixed. And we sum over all these gamma W uh, J. And then we have this uh, this exponent here. It 
the minus minus eight. Is it obvious that there is an a such that uh, the left hand side equals the right hand side? Because you gave the definition of the left hand side before of S A basically. Yeah, if you, yeah. You, well, obvious that it will take will take a couple steps to uh, to work it out, but it is. There always exists an A at least such that the right hand side, uh, such that it's equal to the right hand side. No, it should for for any A. If the same with with churn character corresponding to R C one and C two, the action evaluates to the to this uh, just using that. Um, yeah, trace f wedge f is uh, proportional to uh, the second second churn character, and then the trace of of f is essentially the first one, and that uh, star f, a star you can relate then star f to f using uh, using j because j is self dual. That's the. Other questions. <coughs> and now one uh, way we can, uh, sorry, this I should connect these uh, W and Z. So this this uh, W is e to the two pi i uh, two pi i z. Okay. Okay, and now one way, the, the first um, point now where we will see modular forms appearing is that you can make a so-called theta uh, decomposition from this, this function um, due to the fact that the, these uh, modelized spaces um, of instantons are um, isomorphic if you, um, if you tensor all the bundles with a, with a line bundle. So this will this will change your your second and first uh, churn character, not the rank, but only the second and first churn character. But the, the modelized spaces of these churn characters is uh, uh, are are isomorphic. And um, essentially, due to this relation and these yeah this these invariants are uh, isomorphic, and we can write this generating function as a sum over now a, a finite coset mu and lambda slash R lambda, it's complex conjugate R mu of tau times a theta function R mu of, uh, of tau. Where these are, I will, I will give the, the definition. Functions are sum over all k in uh, mu plus r uh, lambda times q k plus squared q bar k minus squared minus k minus squared. And this uh, lambda, I guess I should say, is um, H2 sigma Z and then the, the H's H's are of mu tau are sum over all the, the second churn classes are the, now the sum over first churn classes is taken into account by the theta functions the sum over the second churn classes um, that's where the non-trivial invariants are uh, just weighted by r times uh, times delta. Okay. Are there 
any, any questions? Okay, so now I will specif specialize for the rest of the talk to the uh, Hitcherpoof surfaces, where one can explicitly determine these, these functions h, where all the, the difficulty is. Um, C1 is equal to, to mu. Oh, okay. that's, uh, that's where the C1 uh, information of the C1 sits. So this, yeah, this gamma is R. Well, this the yeah the geometric underlying is this tensoring of the bundles by line bundle, the, but uh, yeah, it's not not very deep uh, in, in some sense. But uh, except that these these are now honest theta functions which have which transform as modular forms of a given holomorphic and non-holomorphic weight. So we see some modularity appearing. But now in order to go ahead, we we should determine these guys and, and see whether they are uh, modular forms. So let's uh, restrict to the reachable surfaces. Um, it's uh, our fiber. It's our P1 fibers over um, over P1. also P1. Um, so the second homology is, is two-dimensional and we have uh, two generators. The base one is uh, C and the fiber one is, uh, is F. And then the intersection numbers just to be uh, complete are C squared is minus L, C and F are equal to 1 and F squares uh, to zero. So we have the following zero, one. You have the, the following intersection matrix, and you see it's of indefinite, uh, has an indefinite, uh, indefinite form. Now let us uh, parameterize this space of these uh, of these uh, these scalar forms. Um, since this this is a two-dimensional uh, lattice, uh, the space of J's is also uh, two-dimensional. Even although, of course, it's for the stability only it only as projectivation is uh, is important. So I I don't know that we have two integers m and m. It does C plus LF plus um, N times N times F. And then, so basically, what the, the structure of the calculations is is that the, uh, the the partition these H's are known if you go here at the at the boundary. For j is zero zero one. Um, sorry, that is the uh, flip and an m. Um, and then you can do use Walker's formulas to go to any uh, j inside the inside the Kähler group. So let me briefly give these these generating functions. For here, if you go to sit at the, the boundary of the Kähler okay, constant, the space of the maybe I'll use a color. It's a bit precise. This is the, the space of uh, of J. M and N are, are both positive. 
and yeah, and we know the we have formulas for kind of elegant formulas for choosing j at the boundary of the of the Kähler cone, and then for using rock crossing, we can go uh, go inside. So h of R C1 set up J01 is in fact equal to, to zero if the intersection of the fiber and the first term class is not equal to zero modulo R and it is equal to a function R of Z tau if, if it is zero modulo r. And this, these functions uh, take a rather elegant form in terms of uh, Jacobi uh, theta functions and dedicated theta functions. They're i minus 1 to the r minus 1 eta to r minus 3. Theta 1 to r z and the product J is 1, R minus 1, theta 1, 2 to Z. That's squared. So eta is the yeah, dedicate eta function, and these are the anti symmetric uh, Jacobi theta functions. Um, if you set R equal to, to 1, you'll find a Beck uh, Gritsch's formula. If you set R is equal to 2, then you uh, find the result of Yoshioka from 1994. And for all the other R's, it is proven by Moscovoy in 2013, I think. And we also, these, the, these formulas are also known if you would replace uh, this curve by a higher genus curve. And then for genus, uh, genus 1, um, it has been explained in string theory by uh, Babaka Gigat, how all these, uh, these functions appear for arbitrary rank using an elliptic genus uh, calculation. So, yeah, basically, all this, this whole calculation also continues to hold for the, for the world surface. Just for the, this talk, I'll, I'll explain it for genus, genus zero uh, base curve. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, if you have a higher genus curve here, you still have such a yes, it's a, a upper uh, Carter, which is uh, corresponds to the the, the Kähler form. And again, all the these all these these functions are are known at the boundary of the Kähler form, have the similar structure as, as this. And also, all the the right hand sides are also known and, and proven. Um, and yeah, we, we, and they are understood in, in string theory then for for genus. One, because basically you can do this t-duality on the, on the torus. It will be interesting to see whether you can derive for other genera also these, these, uh, these functions from, uh, from string theory for arbitrary, arbitrary rank. Um, but yeah, rank, rank one is also understood in, in string theory. So let me now say a little bit about this, uh, this, this wall crossing. So if we restrict for now to the case of, of rank 2, it can, we can really do it for arbitrary rank, but for simplicity restrict to, to rank 2, then the wall crossing occurs just due to walls where the slope of two uh, constituents, gamma 1 and gamma 2, with rank 1 uh, are, are equal. And then... Um, I, I don't have the time to go in, in full uh, detail, but then you can uh, express uh, this, this generating function z tau j for an arbitrary j in terms of, uh, in terms of, of these functions and uh, so-called uh, indefinite uh, theta functions. So what are the indefinite uh, theta functions? Well, they are a sum over um, lattice points 
in an, um, in an indefinite uh, lattice. Let me call this one lambda uh, twiddle, just to distinguish it from the, the lambda we had uh, earlier for the, the second uh, cohomology. Um, and what is special about these generating functions is that they are Uh, that they are holomorphic in uh, in Q. So this is uh, say signature one comma and minus one is is what I use as uh, as, as convention. So they are mostly uh, negative, and now they are they are holomorphic in in Q. And in order to get then a convergent uh, generating function, you need to insert some a uh, kernel which falls off fast enough uh, for the terms which, have, which are uh, positive in order to get a convergent uh, generating function. Okay, and then uh, classic uh, choice, the, the, the choice of uh, kernel which appears precisely in this this context of the of moduli of, of vector bundles is uh, is as follows. Um, so maybe one. Well, hard to say what. Uh, Is the the difference of uh, two signs the sign of j dot k minus the sign of j prime uh, dot k? There, for this this j prime, you can think of as being this point j uh, zero one, and this is the reference point of the, the point where you are interested in to uh, to move to. So, for example, let me make a diagram. Um, Do this for the lattice um, one one minus one. Again, this is your this is your positive definite uh, subspace. Then here we get a negative definite cone. Here there is a negative definite cone, and then this is a positive. Uh, this is again positive uh, definite. So in order to get a convergent uh, series, if we our um, say j prime we take here to be sitting on the on the boundaries, this is j prime, and this is a j, and this then if you then look where this is non-vanishing, this is some cone in the negative uh, definite uh, subspace. So we are we are summing over lattice points, which are a negative definite subspace of the of the lattice, in such a way that we get the convergent a series. And if we change the stability parameter, then we start changing the subset of lattice points we are summing over. And this is how the partition function, in this case, takes into account the the, the bar crossing of the of the vector bundles. And this. Um, this picture was uh, developed by, by Goethe and Sakier for Donaldson ver invariance and also for the, the ver these vector bundles of, uh, of rank 2. Okay. Um. okay, now it's important that these, we get a, a holomorphic, uh, holomorphic theta function, but because we are not summing over the total of the total uh, lattice, we cannot do Poisson resummation, and this is not um, this theta uh, tau phi is not um, modular. It does not transform as a modular form as we are used to with the theta functions over summing over indefinite lattices, or where the, when they are, or the ones we had where we had these projections to this negative and positive definite uh, subspace.
took it. But then we have, in the meantime, this, this work was about uh, 96. The work of, of Zwegers of, uh, in his thesis of 2002, which basically told us in some sense by hand how to, to change this function to get a function that's transformed as a modular form. And the change is, is really uh, is, uh, is subleading. So we are not going to change the leading behavior of the, of the function. It's a subleading. Uh, but non-holomorphic um, uh, change. And uh, the prescription is to replace, essentially, replace the sign of x um, over there by the following integral, 2 times the 0, square root of 2 tau 2 um, x the minus by u squared uh, du, which is equal, essentially equal to the error function, square root of 2 pi tau 2 x. And um, tau 2 is the imaginary part of, of that. So a couple of things to note are if, if um, that this is now a, a C infinity function, so here we had a discontinuous change across the walls, but this is now in some sense uh, smoothed out uh, by the error function. Um, but if we send this tau two to infinity, then we, we recover the, the sine of sine of uh, sine of x. Um, let me make this slightly uh, more precise by uh, by a formula, because this is relevant later. The error function is equal to the the sine of x minus the sine of x times the uh, complementary error function of the absolute value of, of x. And this, this one goes exponentially quick to, to zero if x goes to, to infinity. And another a proper, important property, actually, of, of the error function also is that if you take the following operator, the x squared plus 2 pi x, uh, the x acting on uh, the error function, that this is equal to, uh, to 0. And basically, this this identity um, uh, implies that if we use define a, a different kernel phi hat of k one half, and now we choose uh, these functions here. So this is r square root two pi tau two j dot k minus the same thing for j prime. Then uh, theta hat is basically the, the same theta function as before, but now with the kernel uh, phi hat uh, is, a, is a modular form or transforms as a modular form. A modular form. So this is a result by uh, Finera. It goes back to 77, but it becomes increasingly uh, more uh, more known. Uh, Swagers in his thesis used Poisson resummation to uh, to explain that this this kernel would would do the job. Um, but uh, this is Wiener has a very general statement about lattices with arbitrary uh, signatures, and uh, the only thing you need to check is that there is a there's a differential equation which needs to act on your on your kernel if that uh, if the right hand side is equal to zero. And, you have, and your your kernel falls off uh, fast enough, then you have a, a, a theta function which has uh, modular properties. Okay. Are there any any questions so far?
Okay, now, yeah, this is, in some sense, this is uh, really put in uh, by hand. And if you say, well, now I, I just changed these indefinite data functions which appear in my partition functions um, to include these, these error functions. Now I have a modular form, and this, uh, this, this now uh, explains the electric magnetic duality is, is not very uh, convincing or, or satisfactory. So therefore, in the, this last 10 minutes or so of the talk, I would like to make another correspondence, again, more towards the, the physics, where these uh, BPS partition functions appear also in the, in the context of hypermultiplet uh, modelized spaces. And from that context, we this is uh, joint work with Sergei Alexandrov, Boris Piolin, and Sebastian Banri from this spring. Uh, we can derive these kind of functions and also make progress to, uh, to higher rank, which was earlier uh, not known. So, corrections. So these, these modelized spaces now have nothing to do with the modelized spaces of these, these vector bundles. These are modelized spaces of, uh, of the scalars in hypermultiplets which appear in string theory uh, compactifications. And we choose the, our compactification manifold now to be a local, a local hitchable surface. So we have a uh, canonical bundle uh, over, the, over the hitchable surface. And um, then these these uh, these uh, n equals four uh, young males appears as the theory living on the free brain instantons which correct the hypermultiplet uh, modelized space. So the link is n equals four uh, young males and the free instantons um, uh, instanton. Corrections to um, to this hypermultiplet uh, modular space. For the hypermultiplet modular spaces, they receive both alpha prime and uh, GS corrections, and among others, they get corrections from all the d brain instantons in the type to b, also of the the d free brain instantons. And the special property of type to b is what we will use is that type to b has a S-duality uh, group, which is SL2Z, under which the free brains are self-dual. So in particular, the, the instanton corrections due to the free brain instantons have to be mapped uh, to itself, and therefore they have to uh, uh, be, in some sense, modular uh, invariant. And in order to, to approach this, this question, we will consider a specific function on the, on the hypermultiplet, uh, on this space uh, MH. It's uh, I denote by e to the phi. It's known as the contact potential or the four-dimensional uh, dilaton. Classically, it goes as the, the volume of the Calabi-Yau times uh, tau two squared. And then it has all kinds of one loop and, uh, and instanton uh, corrections. And you can see from this, this first term, um, this has weight um, plus three over two, comma plus three over two, and then this uh, changes it to minus one half, minus one half. So this is the modular. Uh, so the classical part transforms as a as a modular form, and this is uh, uh, expected to be the case for all the all the, the corrections to this uh, uh, to this this quantity. So the, yeah, the uh, type to be S duality X just on, on tau as the usual uh, modular group. It also acts on the, the volume of the Calabi-Yau and, and the other properties. Okay. Okay. 
Now, there's quite some technology developed in order to include these uh, corrections of, of, uh, of D-Brain uh, instantons, um, in particular due to Kyoto Moore and, uh, and Peitzke, and also due to uh, the Alexandrov, Van Doren, um, Violin Van Doren, and Sauer Essig. Sauer Essig. Um, and so let me just uh, write down the, the, the most famous equation of, uh, of this field. I think quite a few people of you have seen this equation. This is the equation for the, for the so-called uh, Darboe coordinates, uh, which are Darboe coordinates on the, the twister space over this, this hypermultiplet uh, model S space. And they take the, the following form times an so called, uh, for the first part is um, semi flat part, and then we get an exponent where we get a sum over these uh, BPS invariants gamma, gamma prime t, and an integral over the uh, over prescribed integral over P1 zeta plus zeta prime zeta minus zeta prime chi gamma. Okay. Sorry, I'm a bit sketchy here, but uh, kind of the, so we have an integral, we have an integral equation for these uh, Darboe coordinates, which you can solve order by order in the instantons, if you're interested. And it is in terms of this integral over the over the twister space. This is what I wanted to point out. And the, the main thing is that physically this gave a uh, gave a proof of the conservative solomon markowski formula because these Darboe coordinates are are smooth across walls because discontinuities in these invariants were precisely cancelled due to discontinuities in these uh, integrals. Um, okay, so what we did in these projects of the, the spring and also going back to 2012 is that we took a large volume limit of these kind of twister integrals which also appear in this quantity uh, for the, of, of interest. And we found that in the, in, the, in the large volume limit of these twister integrals and the two instant ton approximation, we found integrals of the following uh, form um, i over pi an integral r minus i u uh, dz over z e to the minus pi z squared minus 2 pi i z. So this, was, this basically came out directly out of taking an approximation of, of an integral, of a twister integral like that. And with a bit of staring at this equation, we found that this is equal to the, the sine of, of u times the complementary error function of uh, the absolute value of u times the square root of, of pi. And everybody, I think, combined together in, in precisely such a way that they appeared, they were added, should be added to the, to the just the generating functions of the BPS invariants. And we got a modular a function which transformed as a modular form for, that would be for the, the case R is equal to 2. Sorry, so Gaiotimo and Nets gave us uh, 40 or 2 from Pathfinder S1. Yeah. Well, it would be if you if you do so. Yeah, so if you would start from two a, you would compactify your d four brain. You make time an s one. You do a t duality on that s one, and you uh, expand out to get two b. And then so uh, all these, yeah. So but, but <coughs> the is, these corrections of the of instantons are captured by yeah by identical equations to the hypermultiplet model I suppose. Yeah. Uh, where is the circle? The twist I thought you need a circle for this story. Yeah so I could yeah we can it's R R three times S one times uh Glavia. Ah I see. So you compact Compact to a 
No, no, no. I am, I'm, I'm compactifying type to be string theory on this on this space. Yes. Type to be uh, has among its its d brains, it has the d three brains, which I wrap on a four cycle in the Claudio. And then the world volume theory of those d three brains is n equals four young mills. Oh, those d three brains correct the hypermultiplet uh, modelized space, and therefore the uh, the generating functions. First, I was discussing them from the context of, of just n equals four young mills. Uh, yeah, correct the hypermultiplet metric of the, the string theory compact application. Um, yeah, so we, we found that this is correct, that the, the precise correction is some tau 2 times some modular derivative of the n equals 4 um, uh, partition function. Then, so there was an, an open question how to do this for, uh, for, for higher rank. Um, but this picture of the hypermultiplet modelized spaces uh, basically uh, showed us how to to find these uh, these uh, generalizations of this integral, which would also um, which would help uh, which would help us to to complete some uh, holomorphic sums over over indefinite theta functions with more general signatures, in, in particular n comma uh, n minus uh, two. And this was uh, published in a more mathematical uh, paper. And has been followed up now by uh, by Bringman, by a group of Catherine Bringman and Larry Rowland. Um, the application to gromov witten theory also, and by uh, Kutla, uh, embedding it in his uh, in the Kutla Milson uh, approach to uh, uh, integrals over over theta functions. So, uh, yeah, if you if you start um, if you want to consider corrections. Um, of higher rank, uh, yeah, m more d free brains or higher rank uh, gauge groups, then somehow the most indefinite letters you you will get as signature are r minus one, r minus one. So for rank two we had one comma one, and it goes as r minus one, r minus one. And then from the yeah from the from these expanding out these these twister integrals, we found maybe I'll, I'll write this this formula since it's. It's most new um, M2 looks like something minus one over pi squared. We get two integrals r minus i u1, dz1, another integral over second variable r minus i u2. Here you get an exponent um, sum over i is one and two. <coughs> Sorry. set i squared minus 2 pi i and then the denominator is set 1 set 2 minus alpha set 1 so this is no, it's, it's a bit, bit messy but this is the, the generalization of, of this one necessary for for letters of, of signature two comma say two comma two, and then we were able to passing it together to um, two functions we call generalized error functions, which you have to put into your kernel, and then you get a modular uh, function for for rank two. In principle, higher it can be extended to higher higher rank. So yeah, I would like really like to understand these these corrections purely from the context of n equals to four Young Mills or or from the boundary of, of vector bundle modelized spaces. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy that we already have some physical geometrical explanation now uh, coming from hypermultiplet modelized spaces. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>